today we're going to be spinning the BFL that we got in the Paradise Fibers April 2021 Fiber Club. Sweet Speckles was the theme and we received Blue Face Lester Wool. Um, and they sent along instructions to speckle it with Kool-Aid. So I am not quite brave enough yet to spin, or not to spin, to, um, to dye the fiber. I'm, I'm a little, I'm not experienced enough for my own comfort um, to risk, I, I don't want to risk felting the fiber so I'm spinning it first and then we will dye it. So I have first half, about half of this already spun up. I'm going to pull my leader through. This is just regular commercial yarn that I've got tied on with a half hitch here and Add a loop on the other end. I've got my bag of wool hanging from the mother of all on my wheel. I pull out just a little bit and loop it through my leader loop. Hold that tightly. And that's going to get us some twist built up in there and get that started. I'm not sure y'all can see. So I'm going to just that is one thing that I'm getting better on, but getting started still a little tricky sometimes there is uh, a lot of um, a lot of different things going on when it comes to spinning wool on a spinning wheel and I'm getting there with coordination but it still takes a little bit of work finding the right speed between your hands versus um, treadling speed there we go, we're getting somewhere no, I did it again There's a lot out there in the, just in the world, there's a lot of people that, um, they've been doing things for a long time, they look like experts, they make things look so simple, and it can be a little intimidating, and there's nothing wrong with those people, I don't fault them for it, if they've took the time to hone their skills, then... You know, that's, that's great for them because we can learn a lot from them. We can learn from their mistakes rather than making some of our own. But um, we tend to just see the highlight reel. We, we don't see a lot of those mistakes. And I have a lot of respect for those that do include their learning journey include their mistakes and um, because it it's it makes you not feel as bad as a beginner and it's actually very encouraging to know that this person you look up to um, was a beginner like you at some point this is some very 
very soft wool. The um, Blue Face Lester, it's, if you look at the word Lester, it's not spelled the way that it's pronounced, like even close. When I first um, heard about it, um, it, there's a C in it. It's um, L-E-I-C-E-S-T-E-R. So I was pronouncing it Leicester, which is really off, but thankfully I don't think I said it to anybody that knew any better than me. So for all they knew, I was right. Um, but it is a British long wool, and it has a three to six inch staple length. So it makes it very easy to learn with and when I got my first drop spindle in November of 2020 when we went on vacation, yeah some people still took vacations in 2020, um, the lady at the fiber store suggested it. She said that that's what they start out, all the beginners that come for their classes, they started out on Blue Face Lester because it's uh, the longer the staple length of the fiber the less intense of a twist you have to add and so it's uh, easier to learn with it's easier to handle when you're still trying to figure out what hand does what where and how fast and at what speed it was not the first wool that I used on a spinning wheel um, I did use the first I, I got was some acrylic it's craft fluff that I found at Hobby Lobby really cheap and I thought, well, if I end up tearing this up, it's not a big deal. If I end up ruining it, it's not, not a huge waste. And it also had a very long staple length. Um, so that helped. I'm still working on consistency and... Um, trying to spin a little thinner. Some people like really thick, bulky um, art yarns and core spuns. Um, I did not realize the versatility in yarn. And I've been crocheting for 20 years, um, but it was all commercially bought yarn, either acrylic or cotton. And um, I did not realize the versatility in that comes with spinning your own yarn or with hand spun yarn in general until I started looking into this and learning a lot and then a um, lady by the name of Jillian Eve did a Christmas vlogmas and uh, every day in December, her husband put together a um, almost like an advent calendar with um, different types of wool, different colors. And so she used that opportunity. Um, you can find that on her channel, Jillian Eve. Uh, you can find that and a lot more on her channel and see um, all the different techniques and uh, just different, uh, lots of different things that you can do with wool and with making yarn. But um, some people like really bulky yarn, some people like it where uh, the core spun, it almost looks like little, um, some of it almost looks like it has little beehives in it. And it's really cute. 
I personally prefer to, I want to get the yardage. At least for now, that's my goal is to get quality, yes, but I also, I also want the quantity, words are hard, I also want the quantity, quantity, goodness gracious, along with the quality. So I'm continuing to practice to try to get um, get my yarn thinner, and I've let it get way too wadded up right there. Okay, and now we can go again. So, I am going to finish Spinning this up, it will take me a little while, and y'all, y'all most likely do not want to be here for the whole thing, and that is fine. Um, because listening to this spinning wheel, this this will take a while. Listening to this spinning wheel for that long, it'll put you to sleep. It's super soothing, but um, I'm going to finish spinning this up. I will come back when it's time to fly and film that and then we will also uh, dye our yarn. They sent two packs of Kool-Aid. I can't remember what colors I got um, or flavors rather but uh, I bought a couple extra because I wanted some more color options and we will do that after we finish flying. So I will see you guys when it's time to fly the yarn. Okay, so I have finished spinning and I've wound everything into a cinder pull ball on my bobbin winder and now we are about to start the plying process. Okay so like I said we have our center pull ball. This lets me find both ends from the outside and from where it started. These are I mean, they're pretty inexpensive. Um, I think the one that I got, I got off Amazon for um, maybe $12, something like that. It, it wasn't much, and they're just crazy useful. So, when you're plying, you want to spin in the opposite direction that you spun. So, because I had my wheel going like this while I was spinning I'm going to make my wheel spin like this um, and there is what's called S twist and Z twist so if you think of it an S it's gonna be backwards on my yeah it's gonna be backwards on my camera so if you draw S you're gonna see that the curve goes um, counterclockwise. Z twist, you're heading in a clockwise direction. So that can help uh, help you remember which way. But either way, um, there's I've read a lot of uh, about how one is better for crochet while the other is better for knit. Um, doesn't really matter if you're weaving with it. Um, but I've not found there to be too much of a difference. Of course, I'm still pretty new to hand spun, so, and I don't really knit. I, I crochet. I tried knitting a while ago, um, many, many years ago, and it just wasn't for me. So, um, 
anyways I'm trying to get because I was spinning <clears throat> my wheel going that way um, I had to fix my leader to where it will go the opposite direction now so I'm going to hook it onto my flyer it is fed through the orifice which you can't see because this little doohickey's in the way <clears throat> I'll put it through both hooks and let it just go ahead and take up on my leader. Now, in my leader loop, stop turning. In my leader loop, right here, I've taken both ends of the yarn and fed them through, and I'm holding them. I'm going to let this twist up and get, uh, get it started. Now it will hold it securely while I continue to ply. Some people do not like um, working with a center pull ball, and that's okay. Um, I find it convenient um, just because it for whatever reason, I get less tangled. And I know I'm stopping right now to kind of work out a tangle, but believe me, for me, um, I get less tangled. There is a um, lady by the name of Trish who does uh, has a YouTube channel called Fiber Love Diary. And she does what she calls the turkey hand technique. And I have done that a couple of times, but I have found that it's really good for smaller amounts of yarn when you're beginning maybe as i as i get more experience um i will i'll be able to handle larger amounts so as you can see i'm just pulling um i did get this a little overspun in some areas we have the ball here. We have one strand coming from the inside, the other strand coming from the outside. And my dog heard the word outside, and that's where she's wanting to go. <laughs> and we're just letting them run together, uh, keeping a little bit of tension on it so that we don't end up with um, little parts that have plied back on itself, getting stuck without um, getting um, properly plied. We don't want it to ply on itself. We want it to ply with the other strand. With this, you don't have to watch your speed as much. I mean, you don't want to fly through it. You don't want to go so slow that you can't keep your treadle going, but at the same time, you're not having to worry so much about um, consistency and drafting. So, it's, it's a little smoother going than with spinning. So, I'm going to continue with this. Once I've finished applying it, we will get to dyeing it with Kool-Aid. There we have our twist. Alright, so I will see you guys in a little while. Alright, so I got the yarn all plied up and formed into a skein. Got around 208 yards I uh, followed the directions where um, that were sent with the uh, fiber of the month kit that said to soak the warm uh, the wool in lukewarm water with a quarter cup of vinegar per four ounces. So about a half a cup for this. Uh, soaked it for about 20 minutes, squeezed the water out, and then rolled it into a towel to get it uh, to where it wasn't just soaking wet. Um, 
we don't want to put drywall into the microwave because it will burn and so we do want to um, and plus it'll be hard for the Kool-Aid to um, kind of attach itself and soak into the yarn so my bag came with lemonade and grape flavored this is unsweetened drink mix you can use the kind that has sugar in it um, but then you have to work even harder to rinse all that sugar out or you're going to end up with sticky wool so uh, unsweetened is a better option i am also going to add in cherry mixed berry and blue raspberry lemonade simply because i like the colors of them uh, the directions had said to pour the Kool-Aid powders into a bowl and mix in enough water to make paste. I am going to, um, speckle mine because why not? So I'm not going to, um, bother with mixing them. I'm just going to... So right now I'm pouring the Kool-Aid packets. You know that blue raspberry lemonade is awful light colored, so I don't know what color we'll get from that. Um, and I'm pouring those onto a plate. I will be wearing rubber gloves. Um, this is food safe, of course. But uh, if you ever work with commercial acid dyes, which this technically is an acid dye because it has citric acid in it, but um, it is, it's more food safe, so I'm not really worried about inhaling it. Um, now, if you were to have issues with breathing problems, lung problems, um, you take whatever precautions you need to, but if you do work with commercial acid dyes, you're going to need to um, maybe take a little extra precaution. So we've got uh, we've got the cherry, the what was that? Mixed berry, blue raspberry lemonade, um, grape, and lemonade. So I'm going to sprinkle these on kind of randomly and see what happens. I'm gonna kind of pat these in. I'm gonna try to do one color at a time. I'm hoping I haven't squeezed out too much water. I'm getting a, a bright red from that cherry so far. Got a couple speckle spots per area of that color, so I'm going to move on to the next. This is blue raspberry. These are going to be big speckles. Maybe there'll be more splotches than speckles, but that's okay. I have um, plastic wrap already underneath this. Um, okay, here's the blue raspberry lemonade. We'll see what it does. Yeah, that does give a lighter blue. That's what I was hoping for. Um, and what we'll do is roll the um, the wool up inside this, and then. Um, that's what we'll microwave it in. I've got a plate ready for it to go on. Okay, here we go with grape. It should give us hopefully a purple color. If not, then else maybe a, a, a deeper blue. I'm wondering if I squeeze too much water out, and I may end up sprinkling some water on top of this before putting it in the microwave. Maybe kind of misting over it. 
Okay, and now I should use a different glove. It should give us yellow, um, but it's kind of a light color going on this more natural colored BFL. So I'm going to put that on a little heavier than I did the others. That way we get a good, we can see it really well. Alright, so I'm going to carefully flip this now. Do the other side. And I'm going to continue on like this, and when I get ready for it to go in the microwave, we'll come back then. All right, so I flipped the yarn over several times at a different spot, so now you can't see it very well through the camera lens, but um, I am going to wrap this up in this plastic wrap, put it in the microwave for two minutes, according to the directions that we were sent. Once it's cool, I'll wash it and I'll show you what it looks like. After two minutes in the microwave, this is what we have. It's still very hot to touch. Very. Um, so once it cools, I'll open it up and we'll take another peek. Alright, so this is what we have ended up with. I've got my flash on, so maybe the colors will be seen a little bit better. The yellow didn't really show up that much. Um, I even tried a few spots layering on the yellow and the uh, lighter of the two blues together. To see if I could get a little bit of green. Um, well, there's a tiny bit of yellow there. Um, and it didn't, I don't think it really worked, but... That's okay, and maybe we'll see more of a difference once it is uh, washed and dried. So that's what I'm going to do now. This was the uh, vinegar pre-soak, and I'm going to stick it in there, um, hoping that if there's any dye that has not fully attached to the wool, that uh, maybe the vinegar will help help it to grab on real quick. Um, I've never done this before, so I'm not sure I should expect any color bleeding or not. <coughs> this is, this water is not hot. Like I said, it's from earlier, so it's about room temperature. And there is, seems to be some pink runoff, but there's not much. I'm gently squeezing it's hard to see on camera. I mean, there's just the slightest, slightest bit. So I'm going to get my cold water going. And dump this out. And Nothing that came out there, so I'm going to add a touch of dish soap. Get a few bubbles going there. flash went off. Um, my battery's running low, but that's okay. Um, I hope you can still see that we we don't have any color runoff at all. So that means every bit of dye we applied, every bit of Kool-Aid, has fully attached to the wool. So I'm going to um, spin, spin and uh, press some of the water out of this so that we can get a better uh, representation of the colors and I'll update them. 
Alright, so it's not completely dry, but it is pretty darn close. And though it may not seem perfect to some, I am pretty happy with it. There's flash on. So you can see the colors. We mostly have reds and blues and purples. Some of it spread out a bit, um, while some of it stayed more in a splotchy form. Um, but, I like that dark color right there. I didn't ruin it. I didn't fill up the wall. And I'm happy with that. So, there we are. There's dyeing with Kool-Aid. Pretty darn simple. So let me know what you think about this. And if you have tried it, any uh, extra tips that you might suggest. And um, thanks for watching.